Here's a probability puzzle that's been stumping job candidates at tech companies. It's the morning of January 1st, and we're looking at a hospital nursery. Inside, there are three boys and some number of girls. That night, a woman gives birth to a child. The baby gets placed in the nursery with all the others. Now it's January 2nd, and along comes a statistician who wants to conduct a survey. They randomly select one child from the entire nursery, and this includes yesterday's newborn along with all the children who were already there. The randomly selected child turns out to be a boy. The question is this. What's the probability that the child born on January 1st was a boy? If you're thinking, well, that's easy, it's 50%, you're in good company. Most people immediately jump to this conclusion, and it makes perfect sense at first glance. After all, when a baby is born, there's roughly a 50% chance it's a boy and a 50% chance it's a girl, right? But here's where things get interesting. That 50% figure tells us the probability of the newborn being a boy before we know anything else. But we do know something else. We know that when the statistician randomly picked a child, they got a boy. And that additional piece of information changes everything. Let me give you an extreme example to show why this matters. Imagine the nursery had started with zero boys and three girls. If the statistician randomly selected a child and got a boy, what would that tell us? Well, it would tell us with absolute certainty that the newborn must have been a boy, because that's the only way there could be any boys in the nursery at all. In this case, the probability would be 100%. This shows us that the act of randomly selecting a boy gives us information that shifts the probability. The more boys that were already in the nursery, the less certain we can be that the newborn was a boy. Let's solve this step by step. So, there are three boys, and for now, we'll take three girls in the nursery to begin with. When the new baby arrives, we have two possible scenarios. Scenario 1. The newborn is a boy with a 50% chance of this happening. In this scenario, our nursery now contains four boys and three girls, seven children total. Scenario two, the newborn is a girl, also a 50% chance. Here, we have three boys and four girls, still seven children in total. Now, the statistician comes along and randomly picks a child. They get a boy. What are the chances this happened in each scenario? In scenario one, with four boys out of seven children, the probability of randomly selecting a boy is four divided by seven. In scenario two, with three boys out of seven children, the probability is three divided by seven. Here's where we use a fundamental principle of probability. We want to know, given that a boy was selected, what's the probability we're in scenario one? Think of it this way. Scenario one had a 50% chance of happening. And if it happened, there was a 4 divided by 7 chance of selecting a boy. So the probability of scenario 1 and selecting a boy is 1 half times 4 divided by 7, which equals 2 divided by 7. Similarly, the probability of scenario 2 and selecting a boy is 1 half times 3 divided by 7, which equals 3 divided by 14. The total probability of selecting a boy, regardless of which scenario we're in, is the sum. 2 divided by 7 plus 3 divided by 14, which equals 7 divided by 14, or 1 half. This makes sense. On average, we expect about 3.5 boys out of 7 children. So a 50% chance of selecting a boy feels right. We need to find the probability of scenario 1, that the newborn was a boy, given that we did select a boy. So the probability that we're in scenario 1 is P of scenario 1 Given boy selected equals P of scenario 1, and boy selected, divided by P of boy selected. That equals 2 divided by 7, divided by 1 half, which equals 4 divided by 7, approximately 57.1%. So the answer is approximately 57.1%, notably higher than the 50% that most people guess. This makes intuitive sense when you think about it. If you're randomly selecting from a group and you get a boy, it's slightly more evidence that there were more boys in the group to begin with. And since the newborn could have contributed to that boy count, it's more likely than not that the newborn was indeed a boy. Here's another counterintuitive aspect of this problem. It doesn't matter how many girls were in the nursery initially. Whether we started with one girl, three girls, or 100 girls, the answer remains the same. 
4 divided by 7, or about 57.1%. Let me show you why. If we start with G-girls and 3 boys, then after the birth we either have G-girls and 4 boys if the newborn is a boy, or G plus 1, girls and 3 boys, if the newborn is a girl. The probability of selecting a boy in the first case is 4 divided by G plus 4, and in the second case it's 3 divided by G plus 4. Following the same logic as before, the probability that the newborn was a boy given that we selected a boy is 50% times 4 divided by G plus 4 divided by 50% times 4 divided by G plus 4 plus 50% times 3 divided by G plus 4, which equals 4 divided by 7. We can push this even further. What if the nursery started with B-boys instead of 3? Working through the same logic, the probability that the newborn was a boy becomes B plus 1 divided by 2B plus 1. Notice what happens as B gets larger. With one initial boy, 1 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1 equals 2 thirds, approximately 66.7%. With three initial boys, 3 plus 1 divided by 6 plus 1 equals 4 sevenths, approximately 57.1%. With 10 initial boys, 10 plus 1 divided by 20 plus 1 equals 11 divided by 21, approximately 52.4%. With 100 initial boys, 100 plus 1 divided by 200 plus 1 equals 101 divided by 201, approximately 50.2%. As the number of initial boys grows, the probability approaches 50%, but it's always slightly above it. This makes perfect sense. When there are already many boys in the nursery, randomly selecting a boy doesn't give us much new information about the newborn. But when there are fewer boys initially, selecting a boy is stronger evidence that the newborn might have been the source of that additional boy. This problem is a perfect example of how conditional probability can trip us up. Our brains are naturally wired to think about the initial 50-50 chance of the birth, but we're not naturally good at updating that probability based on new evidence.